We're at 5.7b now, and we're going to justify the Pythagorean Theorem by building figures. We're up to 14 previous videos that are linked in the Geometry Playlist. So we're going to justify the Pythagorean Theorem by building two-dimensional figures and comparing their areas. So, just as a reminder, a squared plus b squared equals c squared is the Pythagorean Theorem for right triangles. So the first thing we're going to do is make four large identical scalene right triangles on grid paper and label the shorter leg A and the longer one B and the hypotenuse C. So we need four of those. And you can make your A any number of units you want or B. You can make that any number of units you want. So now we draw a square with the side lengths of whatever your B was minus A. So, my B is a 12 and my A is a 5, so my sides of my little square here are going to be 12 minus 5, or 7 units across and 7 units down. And we label each side of the square as B minus A. Okay, we did it all the way around. And we cut out each figure. And the area of my triangle, so remember, area of a triangle is half base height. So here's our base and here's our height, so it's going to be half AB. Well, if my A is a 5 and my B is a 12, it's going to be half times 5 times 12, or 30 square units. And the area of my square is S squared, that's side times side, right? So it's going to, because it's 7, it's going to be 7 times 7, so that means it's 49 square units for my little square. We can take these pieces, our four triangles in our square, and we can arrange them like this. If you look, I laid two of them like a rectangle here, two of them like a rectangle here, and then I put the square up there. And we can think of this composite figure as being made of a small square, right here, you can see I drew a line, on the left, and this larger square to its right. So what are the side length and area of this small square? Well, we can see the side is A, so the side length is A, and the area of this little one would be A squared. What about the large one? Well, we've got a side length of B. Look at that. And the area would be B squared. Definition of a square is all the sides of the same length, so we would do B squared. And we can use our results from the previous step here to write an algebraic expression for the area of the composite figure. We get A squared plus B squared. We can add these two squares together as a squared plus b squared. Now we can change this and rearrange it, the five figures to make a single square. So if you look, I've got all the b's inside and all the hypotenuses on the outside. See that? And because every hypotenuse is on the outside making the edge of the square, my area would be c squared. See? And the area of this composite figure is equal to the sum of the areas of the sm five smaller figures. So one triangle is 30, and we had four of them, right? And the area of the square, the, this little square here, is a 49, right? So in a right triangle, the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs equal the square of the hypotenuse. That's what the Pythagorean theorem says. And we can find the hypotenuse of my triangles. We know my A was a 5 and my B was a 12, so we could do 5 squared, that's 25, plus 12 squared, that's a 144, and we get 169 equals C squared. We take this little two exponent away by putting a radical sign around this side of the equal sign, and C is equal to the square root of 169, which is 13. So we know my hypotenuse is a 13 on my triangle. That's a 13. So the area of my composite square would be side squared, right? So it would be C squared. This is my hypotenuse. That's 13. See? So we could do 13 squared, which is 169 square units. That's the area of all my little pieces here. And the area of each triangle was 30. We figured that out right here, right? And the area of the small square was 49. We figured that out because it's 7 units by 7 units. And we had 4 triangles, so 4 times that 30 is equal to 120, plus that 49 is 169 square units. See? So I hope this is helpful, and we're going to continue on with 5.7.
with 5.7c, we're going to do the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. After that, we're going to do the Pythagorean inequalities theorem. Make sure you remember how to simplify radicals and make sure you remember how to FOIL, okay? Doing binomials, all right? So have a great day. I'll see you next time. Hit that like button. Bye.